I first saw these hills in Mount Veeder, I was attracted by its beauty. Trusting instincts is, is a big part of grape growing and, and winemaking. In Mr. Hess's case, in Donald's case, he had the instinct that, that Mount Veeder was going to make great wine. Mount Veeder, it's a wild place. It's grape growing on four dimensions. You have elevation, and you have aspect, and you have exposure. The vines on Mount Veeder are literally clinging to the side of this mountain. Our yields are closer to two tons an acre instead of three tons per acre. But in my opinion, the best fruit is grown on the side of a mountain. The Hess Collection is a particularly special location because of its heritage, the sense of place that we have. We've got a strong connection to the arts and to a sense of uh, creative purpose, a real destination and a location within Napa. Persistence is not just a virtue in the wine industry, it's a requirement. You look at any wine growing and wine making family throughout history, it takes multiple generations to establish an international brand. That is all about persistence. I was very fortunate to be able to work with Donald, especially in the first 10 years I was here. Donald is a man with incredible integrity. Donald is a man of great vision, and he absolutely knows what he wants from the winery, and that's what set us off on our course. Donald Hess is my father-in-law, and together with my wife, Sabrina, we represent the fifth generation of the Hess family. I never imagined that I would be a vintner. I grew up in a small rural country called Swaziland in Southern Africa. It certainly wasn't a, a career that was offered to me in career guidance. At the Hess Collection, we do have a wonderful history and a heritage, and so that's an amazing foundation on which to build. However, it's an enormous opportunity for us to galvanize things and to some degree reinvent ourselves. When I think of Donald, it's quite rare actually for somebody who's built up their baby to be able to hand it over in such a gracious way. So whilst he's very much to the sounding board and a source of wisdom, he's also pretty relaxed in giving us free reign on where we want to go. It's a great family to work for. And for somebody like me, who's a winemaker, an artist, and a farmer, it's been a great place to work because they're willing to do what it takes to make top quality. Good grapes should grow on the hillsides. The tradition the Romans believed in. Mount Veeder is one of the five mountain appellations in Napa Valley. We're right on the southernmost edge of the Mayakama Mountains, the mountain range that separates the city of Napa to the city of Sonoma. The elevation for us is all about temperature. The higher you go up, as you might suspect, the cooler it gets. However, there's a caveat to that. It's also out of the fog. So you get a lot of days with nice, sunny conditions, and it creates wines that are extremely dark in color, really intense tannins. Our Veeder Hills Vineyard at 900 feet is much different than our Veeder Summit Vineyard at 1,800 feet. Once you've identified what works best in that microclimate, you can use that elevation and just enhance the wines and accelerate your quality. Every block on Mount Veeder has its own needs and it is different from its neighbor. I consider them like children. We love them all, but they all need something slightly different. That's the way you extract the best quality and that's what makes Mount Veeder so diverse. We have more soil types up here than nearly any other Appalachian in Napa Valley. There's a great old saying on Mount Veeder, if you don't like the ground, move three feet. And it's dang near true we're also able to define with a lot more precision using the latest technology, where to put the right variety, what rootstock to use, how much water is needed, and we'll use those as a blueprint to go towards the future and building on that quality and making it even better. Mount Beater can be a muse as well as an enemy. There are definitely times when vintages are challenging, when the mountain feels like it's an enemy. Steepness of slope, soils that are rocky, definite challenges to overcome as each year unfolds. 
when it all does come together, it's exciting to think in three years we'll be able to enjoy the wines produced from the fruit that we have a hand in growing. It's the red dirt, it's the rocky and very shallow soils that make a really concentrated wine. That leads into great ageability. Most people know that Mountain Cabernets have much bigger tannin, and it's something as a grower and a winemaker you have to work with and control a bit, but it also makes for extremely wonderfully age-worthy Cabernets. Mount Veter is definitely a spiritual place for me. Running a winery incorporates so many different aspects of what interest us. At our core, we are farmers. Overlaid on that is a creativity, man's interaction with the land, the difficulties with dealing with different vintages. On top of that, one's expression in both terroir and in what ends up in the glass. We're busy 365 days a year. December and January, the first part of February, we're pruning. When we get into March and into April, and we start with our canopy management passes, we're shoot thinning, we're suckering. As the season progresses, we move into leaf removal, into crop thinning, all the while making certain to give the vines just enough nutrition, just enough irrigation to sustain the vines, to get them into harvest. And harvest for us is mid-September, another exciting time of year, lots of activity. That's the point at which the vineyard side turns it over to the winery and they take over. It's a bit of a mystery every year, and you've got to use that experience and that gut feel to get there. I get one shot a year growing the best grapes and making the best wine. And if I want to reload and try something else, it's going to take me another vintage to do it. Usually the efforts are worth it. The rewards are there. The rewards are worth it. Blending is something that they can't teach you in school. It's not intuitive. A lot of times you can take several lots that you might like but don't love, put them together, and they sing. So there's a lot of art to it. There's a lot of trial and error. It takes hours and hours and hours at the blending table to get it just right. But when you get it right, you know it, and, and that's what makes that part worthwhile for me. Yeah, I do the liquid art here. Art for me has nothing to do with logics. When a painting touches you, you know it. If you are lucky enough to be a collector, you should share it with other people. Like wine, rarely you open a, a bottle of wine for yourself. Art really runs through the entire Hess family. My mother and Donald actually met through art. They were both randomly going to the same Andy Goldsworthy exhibition that was in Scotland. Donald had two creative passions which he wanted to pursue in his life, and those were art and wine. And so he worked hard to make sure that they were accessible by everyone and not just the preserve of the privileged. There are numerous barriers to entry in both wine and art, whether you're looking at a wine list and you don't know sort of where to go, or whether it's looking at a piece of art and not necessarily knowing who the artist is. We've had the philosophy, and, and Donald had the philosophy, that art like wine should be shared. Not only is it for everyone, but ultimately the most important point is, do you like it? And it's an individual experience as well as a social experience, and there's nothing more or less that should be important. There is something about both art and wine in enjoying it, appreciating it, connecting with it. Everyone can have their own journey with the art piece or with the wine. I'm really interested in removing any pressures that can come with an art world or a wine world where people feel like they need to be feeling a certain way, that you're allowed to just have your authentic experience of the glass of wine or the piece of art. I think of Donald Hess on a regular basis. He had this vision to develop vineyards on the side of this hillside, and I agree that the, the best fruit comes from the side of a mountain. So now we have the next generation in the Hess family, and Tim, I tell you, from being here many, many years, it's like a rebirth. There's a new look, there's a new feel, there's a new energy, and quite frankly, a very clear and distinct vision for the future. To maintain the legacy of Donald Hess, it's important while allowing the future to also continue to happen. Donald is definitely interwoven in these walls from the art collection to what we're doing in back. Donald is definitely still a big personality in the place. When I think of Donald, what I've always been struck by is his sort of fearlessness. And for me, he really embodies somebody who has just 
followed his life path in a way where he's really honoring really essentially his intuition. If you meet Donald, he's not that heady or intellectual about his decisions or his art buying or any of that. A lot of it is gut instinct, intuition, and I really value that. Donald always talked about nurturing the land and giving back what you take. And that ethos speaks very naturally to what we now more broadly call sustainability. So a lot of what we've been doing here is building a sustainability committee and building a ratchet-like system of values. Most of our value sits in the land that we own. So if we want to look after the value of our business and the value of what we have as a location, we need to make sure we look after it and we need to make sure that we improve it year on year and we don't just subtract from it. Wine Elevated is high quality wines that will last the test of time. Wine Elevated means continuing to raise the quality bar each and every vintage. We learn something every year as we're caring for these vineyards that we can apply to future vintages. I've been working on this mountain for close to 40 years now, and I wouldn't still be here if I didn't think the wine quality was outstanding. It's wine quality elevated. Wine Elevated encompasses everything that we do here. There's the wine and the art and the final product, but also how are we getting to the wine in the glass? Literally from what are we doing with the land and the soils and how are we thinking about water? How are we navigating all those relational dynamics both within a family and then within the bigger Hess family and everybody that works here? And are we navigating those a little bit more consciously so that the whole journey of getting to the wine or the art is sort of slightly on a different level? It's about being respectful of the past and that we build something for the future, for ourselves and for generations to come. When I walk through the vineyards, I respect what a vine has to produce couple of pounds of marvelous grapes. 